Good Tuesday morning. I uh, want to share a passage with you uh, from the book of Philippians. Uh, the Apostle Paul uh, shares uh, a great, great verse. I'm sure it's one that you're familiar with. He says that I may know him in Philippians 3.10, that I may know him, speaking about Jesus, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Well, he said a mouthful there. It's interesting because he's in this chapter, Paul's talked about what he used to be. Uh, he shared uh, all, of the, uh, all of the religious accolades that he'd, he had acquired, the things he'd accomplished in the past in, in his uh, religious life before he came to Christ. And, and he comes to the conclusion that uh, in all reality, I've, I've, I've done away with all that. I've forfeited all that. But none of that meant anything. It, 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 was, it was just waste. It, it meant not a thing. Uh, the only thing I want is, is Christ. I just, I just want to be found in him, and, and I don't want to have my own righteousness. I, I want to depend upon his righteousness. And, and so Paul said, I, I, I just want to be found in Christ with his righteousness and all that other stuff that I did. It, it really means nothing. The only thing that is important unto me is Christ. And it's, it's on the heels of that, that great statement that Paul is making that, that, that Jesus is everything, uh, that, that he, he shares the, the reality that, that he wanted to know him. It's interesting uh, because his, his desire and ambition is, is certainly noble, but you would think if anybody knew Jesus, if anybody knew Christ, uh, Paul would be the one who knew Christ. He, he had this, this wonderful uh, opportunity to spend time in the wilderness with Jesus. Uh, he, he certainly uh, had this opportunity uh, on, the, on the road to Damascus where, uh, where he was challenged and even came to faith in the Lord. Uh, Paul had great exposure. Uh, certainly in the day that he was living, he must have crossed paths with, uh, with, with Jesus, probably heard him preach or teach a time or two, uh, and, and I understand his mind may have been closed to some things at that point, and, and God opened his mind, but, uh, but, uh, but anyway, Paul has this, this ambition, this desire uh, to know the Lord, and uh, he wants to know Jesus better. Now, after he came to faith, uh, you, you would think Paul certainly knew the Lord. He's the author of numerous books uh, in the New Testament, uh, God uses him in a tremendous way as, as a church planter in starting churches, and, and uh, uh, he, he was a leader within the, uh, the early Christian movement. Uh, but his desire is to, is to know the Lord. And, and there are a couple ways Paul wanted to know him. First of all, he wanted to know him personally. Uh, he said that I may know him. Uh, people know a lot of things, um, but, but a lot of what we, what we know uh, in terms of eternity, it's really not not very very helpful, not not very useful. Uh, people know a lot of things about about their business. They they know a lot of things about the job, a lot of things about work. They they know a lot of things about family. They they know a lot of things about about sports. We we know a lot of things about entertainment. There are things that uh, that, that that we've seen and and have tucked away in our minds, and we can pull them back at a moment's notice. Uh, there, there are a lot of things that we know, but Paul said the one thing he wanted to know, uh, he wanted to know Jesus better, that I may know him. And so he has this desire to know the Lord better. And I would say that every believer, every Christian has a desire to, to go deeper in their walk with the Lord. They want to know him uh, better. They want to know him. Uh, the reality is if you want to know him, it's going to require some effort. It's going to require some work. And I would say that not everyone who names the name of Christ is willing to put in the time. Uh, I, I think that's a fairly safe assessment because you see so very few that do put in the time. Uh, but Paul wanted to know him. And if you and I are going to know him uh, on, a, on a deeper level, on a deeper basis, uh, we certainly have to spend time communing with him in prayer. Uh, but, but the chief way that God has chosen to reveal himself uh, is through the Word of God and through the through His Son. He He, he revealed Himself through the prophets, but but uh, now hath in these days revealed Himself through His Son. Uh, and so, in order to to really know Jesus, uh, we need to know something about about the Word. Uh, Jesus even said, "Search the search the Scriptures." Um, uh, he said, "Listen, they testify of me. If you want to know me, 
uh, then, then, then know the Word. Spend time in the Word of God. Uh, and, and, and again, we're not searching the Scriptures because somebody asked us a question at work and we couldn't answer. We're, we're not just doing that to have an answer to give back or, or, or that somebody brought something up and, and uh, there, there was a difference of opinion and, and uh, uh, it, it began a, a, a d debate and, and uh, we don't want to come up on the short end of the stick. So we're, we're researching and we're looking so that we can, uh, we can be equipped to win the debate the next time that, that that issue comes up or we can go back the next day and, and, and share what we found. It's, but we're, we're not looking in the Word of God for some, some trivial bit of, of knowledge, um, like who did Cain marry? So who, what matter? Who, who cares who Cain married? It doesn't make a, a bit of difference in terms of eternity. And folks get, get caught up on all sorts of things. And, and uh, at any rate, uh, we, we want to study the scriptures that we might know Jesus in a more personal manner. And when you're spending time consistently in the word of God, God is pouring himself into you. You are, you are knowing, uh, knowing the Lord Jesus. Uh, Jesus is the Word. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father. And so when we're spending time in the Word, we're, we're, we're learning more about Christ. We are knowing Him better. And, and again, it's not just about knowing about Him. It's knowing Him. I, I know about Nick Saban, but I don't know Nick Saban. Uh, matter of fact, if he passed me on the street, he wouldn't know who I was. I'd know who he was, but he wouldn't know who I was. Uh, I, I, you know, I, there, there are a lot of folks I know about that are, that are famous folks, but, but I don't know them. Um, it is an interesting dynamic in, in the world we live in. People, uh, they read a little bit about celebrities and, and about folks and, and they, they think they know them. Well, they really don't know them. They know a little bit about them, but, but that's not what Paul is searching for. And it's not what's available unto us. It's not just that we can know about Jesus. We can know Jesus. And Paul's desire was to know him in a more intimate, deeper way than he already did. And, and honestly, if Paul can continue to grow uh, in this relationship with Christ, then we can continue to grow in our relationship with Christ. And so he wanted to know him personally. He, he also wanted to know him particularly. In other words, he said, I, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. And so, so as, he's, as he's on this quest for, for knowledge and knowing the Lord, and, and not just having knowledge, but knowing the Lord, uh, Paul said there, there are some things that, that he really wanted to identify with, some things he really wanted to, uh, to, to know uh, about Christ. And, and one of those was the power of Christ. He said that he wanted to know the, the power of his resurrection. Again, not just know about it because he knew about it. He knew that he resurrected from the dead. He knew that uh, that uh, that he had laid down his life and took it up again. Uh, but 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 he wants to know about the power of that resurrection and 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 namely that power. He wanted it to be integrated into his own life. Uh, the word for power is the word dunamis, and and it's the idea of of explosive power. It's the idea of. Of, of great power. It's not exousia authority. It's, it's power. It, it, it's it's uh, 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 the, the idea of, of great strength or great, uh, great ability, great, great power. And, uh, and Paul said he wanted to know that resurrection power of Christ. Uh, and, and by the way, that power that raised up Jesus can be evident uh, in our lives as well. One day it will be uh, because uh, the, these bodies that are decaying and deteriorating and are dying uh, one day, if the Lord tarries his coming and we go the way of all men, uh, this body of the believer will be resurrected again, and, and, and we'll know it in that sense. But Paul's speaking about something, I think, I think more than just that. Uh, it's, it's the concept of, of this, this, this resurrection power that enables us to live the Christian life, this resurrection power that, that enables us to be victorious over temptation, victorious over, over sin, victorious in this sin-tainted world that we live in. And, and so Paul was looking for that, that power that would enable him uh, to live the Christ life, to live his life the way Jesus uh, modeled and, and, uh, and showed us how to live the, uh, the, the life of faith. And it takes supernatural power to live for Christ. And the same power uh, that raised Jesus from the dead is available unto you and I to enable us to live our life for Christ. 
Uh, he, we, we don't, we don't live for the Lord in our own strength. We submit, we, we, we yield unto him. And as we do submit and yield, that, that power of Christ that enables us to, uh, to live our lives for Christ. Uh, Paul talked about, about that power elsewhere. He, he said in Ephesians chapter one, that, that he was interested in the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe, which he, which God wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And so the, the power that, that raised up Jesus from the dead is accessible for us to live a godly life. Uh, it's, not about, it's not about gumption. It's not about grit. It's not about pulling, pulling up your own bootstraps. It's, it's the power of Christ as we submit and yield to him that flows in us and through us and enables us to live our life for Christ. And so he wanted to know the power of Christ. He also wanted to know the pain of Christ and the fellowship of his sufferings. It's not, uh, he's not being sadistic. Paul, Paul doesn't have just this, this desire to, uh, to, to, to suffer and be abased. That, that, that's not his, his desire. Uh, his desire is to live so faithfully for Christ that, uh, uh, that, that he, he willingly suffers for Christ, if that's what, it, what it's called. He, he's willing to, uh, to do whatever it takes to honor the Lord. And, and, and in a society, in a culture that is running uh, in conflict, with the way of God and the way of Christ, uh, that they're going to be there's there's going to raise opposition. There's going to be conflict. You're you're going to be required to suffer to live for the Lord. Um, we we talk about uh, the consequences of, of the choices people make, and and that's a big thing right now in our in our circles, in our society, in our culture. Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna make the choice to follow Jesus, it comes with consequences. Uh, there are certainly the good consequences, uh, but, but there are some things that can be difficult. If we're going to follow him faithfully, uh, it may require us to suffer. We, uh, we may have to suffer in terms of, of, uh, of, 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 of relationships, that it, that it hurts or hinders because we chose to follow Christ and others aren't on board with that. And, uh, we, we may suffer uh, in terms of, of, uh, of, our, of our employment, of our career, because we chose to follow Christ, and it may not jihaw with uh, our, our new lifestyle, may not jihaw with, uh, with uh, uh, the folks that we serve under, that we, we work under. It may, it may hurt in terms of promotion. It may hurt in, 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 in terms of, of the assignments we receive, and, and, and it may even hurt ultimately in terms just of employment in general. Um, but, but he said, listen, I just, I just want to suffer uh, suffer with the Lord. If he suffered for me, then I'm willing to do whatever it takes to live my life for him, even if it requires suffering. And then he, he also said he wanted to, to know the purpose of Christ, being made conformable unto his death. So not just his power, not just his pain, uh, but also his purpose. Um, Paul recognized that he wanted to be completely yielded to the will of God uh, just as just as Jesus was 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 yielded to the will of the Father, he was submissive to the will of God uh, so much so that he willingly uh, went to the cross and and laid down his life. Paul talked about that back in chapter two in verse eight. He said he said when Jesus exited heaven, he he was found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Uh, he was so focused on doing what God's will was for his life uh, that even though it required him to surrender his life, and he knew that. He knew that's what, what the will was. That was the will they formulated in eternity past. Uh, he was willing to do that, uh, willing to go to the cross and die. And, and, and so Paul said, uh, he said, whatever God's purpose is for my life, I'm, I'm willing to do it. And, uh, and, and his heart's desire was, uh, Lord, I, I just want my life to be used for your glory and for your honor. Any way you can use me, anything you can do with me, Lord, use me to glorify you. And uh, so Paul said that I may know him, that I may know the power of his resurrection, that I may know the fellowship of his sufferings, and that I ultimately might be conformable unto his death, a death of sacrifice, sacrificing my life for the will of God, that God could use me in a way that would bring glory and honor unto him the way that he used the Son to bring glory and honor unto him. That was Paul's heart's desire. And I hope, I trust, that's our desire as well. Father, thank you for the day and your goodness to us. I do pray you'd walk before us and guide and direct our every step. Lord, help us to know you in a more intimate way. 
Uh, Lord, help us, I, I pray, to walk in your power. Uh, Lord, if it requires suffering to follow you, Lord, if it brings pain into our life, help us to, uh, Lord, not to swerve from that. Help us not to turn from it, but Lord, help us to faithfully follow. Uh, Lord, even, even to the point uh, that we're willing just to surrender our all unto you. Uh, Lord, being made conformable unto your death. Lord, help us to be faithful, I pray. God, use us for your glory. May we make an impact in this world for you. And so, Lord, keep your hand upon us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. Hope you have a great day. Look forward to seeing you in the Lord's house.